Okay, this is Python programming, and we're kind of doing some intermediate programming, I guess you could say, uh, some beginning stuff. But we're looking at some uh, probabilities. And let's see here. Get all this on the screen. Well, it doesn't look like I'm going to be able to get the whole thing on here. I think actually. Okay, let's look at that. All right, it's good enough, I suppose. Okay, so this is the uh, table at the roulette wheel, and of course the roulette wheel is somewhere over here somewhere, but we don't need to look at that. We're going to ask the question. They're going to roll the wheel, and the ball is going to land on one of these right here. Okay, so this is a roulette wheel that consists of a zero and two zeros. If you've ever played roulette, actually, it's a pretty easy game. Okay, so what's the probability of a black of the ball, let's say, landing on a black, and that would be a black number? And that's the question that we're going to ask. And then we're going to uh, ask some other questions, like, for example, what's the probability of getting three blacks in a row, or four blacks in a row, right? Okay, so let's go ahead and bring up the editor. <clears throat> okay. Get everything here. All right, so the first thing we're going to need to do is we're going to need to import, since we're going to need to generate a random number, we're going to need to import the uh, random module. All right, and much like the last video, we'll have to uh, define our number of trials. So <clears throat> every time they spin the wheel and the ball lands on a number, we will consider that to be a trial. Okay, and of course we'll keep up with how many trials that is, and then we'll just call this since we did in the last. Uh, in the last uh, video we called these outcomes All right so we'll keep up with the outcome you can label it whatever you want I suppose alright All right, so we'll use a while statement for the loop much like we did in the last video okay so we'll go ahead and let n be uh, the number that comes up on the roulette wheel and random integers. Okay, so let's go back. Let me bring that picture back up again. Okay, so how many uh, numbers are there? Well, you get 36 plus the two zeros. So that would be 37 and 38. All right, so this is the total number of possibilities here um, in the sample space, I guess you could say all the possibilities it could land on okay and that would be 38 and the number of possibilities for it to be uh, we're gonna say uh, landing on a black well let's see if this is 36 divided by 2 is 18 and half of those are black half of these are black here and so that's gonna end up being uh, yeah 18 so that'll be 18 right Let's uh, get back to the programming. All right. So all the possibilities was 1, 2, 38. All right. So it can randomly pick um, between 1 and 38. And now we'll need an if statement. And of course, you know, this random pick here is uh, all equally likely. It's either, all right, I haven't really mentioned much about that, but how it's generating these random numbers. All right. That doesn't matter at this point. Okay, so here's the deal. Um, what we're going to do is, is we're going to look at this as like one, whoops, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and then so on, all the way up to um, 38. All right. 
and it, and each one of these uh, it's equally likely okay it's just as equally likely to be a 5 right than it is a 1 or a 38 or any one of these numbers so if that's the case then what I'm going to do here is um, we're gonna make this a whole lot easier so we're going to just say look the probability that the number is is less than or equal to 18 right less than or equal to 18 okay and let's see so if that happens we want to count the number of times that this happens right our outcome plus equals one the number of times this is actually black maybe that's probably what I should be defining this as counting the number of black ones that comes up we'll just go ahead and leave it at that and then of course we'll need to you know what I just seen something here that should be a C and that should be an S. Wow. Alright, so we want to count All right, the number of trials. We've got to keep up with that. Okay. So that's basically it right there. And then we'll print out on the screen when we're done the probability. And we're letting our random variable X be black. Right? that the uh, ball lands on black. Alright. And let's see. See out. So this is the number of times. Right, we've counted the number of times that it uh, lands on black over the total over all the possible or over all the trials over all the trials. So that should give us probability. Okay, let's go ahead and run this. Let's see what we got. Hopefully we got any problems. Well, that thing jumped over there. Hmm. Okay, so we're getting 0 .472. Now, I don't think I talked about the if we wanted to actually calculate the uh, theoretical value. Well, how many black how many uh, blacks are there? There's 18 on the wheel. And then over the total, all the possibilities, that would be, right? Let's just go ahead and back to our picture here. Okay, so we have uh, 18 blacks, all right? And then over all of the possibilities, and all these are equally likely, okay? They're not weighted. They're all considered to be it's just as equally likely for it to be a 1 or a 9 or a 19 or um, right that it could land on okay if it's not then we need to do some investigation going on there alright now we're running uh, how many trials did we run Have to look at that so we ran a thousand trials um, actually Okay, let's uh, let's see. 18 over 38. Okay, so let me write this out here. 18 over 38 um, is approximately. This should be an approximate sign. 0 0.4736. We should be getting close to this number right here. So as the number of trials increases, okay this number this our our experimental value should be converging towards our theoretical value okay the theoretical value which is actually here and of course we could simplify that down if we wanted to All right so let's go back and take a look at that so actually Right, so we got a point. Of course, you can see I ran some, uh, ran the code a few times before we even did this video. Okay, so what do we got? We got uh, 0 0.472. Now, we said that it was uh, 0. Point, um, what did we say? 0 0.4736. So let's see as we increase the number of zeros there number of trials I should say 
we get 0. Point, now see that's 0. 0.469 all right let's do it again let's run it again all right so this should be a three here let's add another zero and we might have gotten a three if we ran that same script this program is going to take a little bit longer the time you do this eh, we're getting something there let's just run it one more time with the same number of trials and see what number we get up here Oh, we got a three that time. All right, I'm going to add one more zero, and then what we're going to do is um, we're going to add to this program. All right, it should be popping up any second now. I'm pretty confident if we ran it again, we'd end up getting uh, getting a three here. And actually, okay, well, anyway. So as you can see here, we increase the number of trials, and it converges. As, as, as this goes to infinity, right, our experimental value shall converge towards the theoretical value. I guess that's one way of saying that. Okay, well, let's take a look at this. Let's say, for example... We did, uh, and you can consider this to be a trial. So they spin the wheel, the ball lands um, on a color, and then we write it down. Then we spin the wheel again, the ball lands on a color, we write it down. And we'll, we're going to do this three times, or let, let's first do it two times. So here's the question: We're going to find the what's? We're going to find the probability that the ball. Okay, is black again that lands on a black number on the second time the wheel is spun all right and we'll call this n2 here okay so we'll have to say if n sub 1 right is less than or equal to 18 and we'll have to use and n sub 2 is less than or equal to 18 then we'll want to uh, count that Right, so this number should be a little bit smaller. Okay, should be a little bit smaller, and we'll talk about how to what that theoretical value is, and maybe we'll try to guess what the theoretical value is. We don't, we don't know, we don't know how to calculate the theoretical value. So that's the reason we're running a simulation, right? and that's what the power of this is. If you don't know how to calculate the theoretical value, we can run a simulation, set up a simulation. And uh, and you know what? I didn't want to run 10,000 trials. We're going to need to uh, abort this mission. I didn't mean to do that. Let's get rid of some zeros here. Okay, let's run it again. And, of course, we'll have to resize the screen. <coughs> okay, well, it didn't take long for that. So we're getting a 0 0.2302. So this was the probability that two blacks in a row. Okay, what's the probability that we get two blacks in a row? And we get to 0.3202. All right. I should have one black in a row up there. Um, let's actually add a zero. Let's see if we can kind of guess what the theoretical value is actually going to be. Okay, so we get 0 0.22. We'll add another zero. Okay, so my guess is it's going to be pretty close to that. This is the probability that two blacks um, in a row come up. And that probability is 0.22. Now, if you want to ask the question, what's the probability um, 
the two blacks don't come up in a row, well then it would just be one, one being the total probability minus, minus this, right? Minus this. So the probability that that actually occurs is uh, getting smaller as the number of blacks in a row. Now, what we're going to do here is is we're going to ask the question, what's the probability that three blacks in a row comes up now? And of course, we should expect this number to be uh, even smaller. So we're going to add to this and ints of 3 is less than or equal to 18. So this says ints of 1 is less than or equal to 18 and ints of 2 is less than or equal to 18 and ints of 3 is less than or equal So all, all these three, when it comes through and generates three random numbers, right, all three of these must be less than or equal to 18 and if they are then we'll count that. All right, so let's go ahead and first subtract a zero there so the program doesn't take as long to run. Okay, and of course we can't see anything on the screen. All right, let's move that up. So as you can see, it's 10%. All right, or if we move the decimal place over, it's close to 10%. Let's add another zero here. Hit run. Let's see what we got coming up. I would imagine it's going to get, it's going to be pretty close to that. Yeah. Okay. So this is the probability that three blacks in a row come up on the, on, uh, they come up. Now, um, this is where I get, I, this is where I fall into, uh, into the trap. And that is, so I put my chips on, uh, I put my chips on black. So you see, I put my chips on black, right? And let's say red comes up. Well, then I just double my money. So I put five dollars on black, and then um, and then I, well, let's say I lose, it doesn't land on black, and then I put uh, ten dollars on black to win back the money I lost previously, right? And uh, and then I lose again, and I'm like, well, wait a minute. You know, the probability that three blacks in a row occurs is 10%. In other words, it's in my favor that uh, it's going to be a red or or even land on the green. It's, 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 it's hugely in my favor that three blacks in a row are not going to come up, right? Or, wait a minute, um, I've got this backwards. I'm betting on black, sorry. And I lose my money, and let's say it lands on a red, and I lose my money, I lands on a red again. I mean, so, you know, what are the chances? Um, <coughs> I, I, I should I should be putting my money, I guess, you know, so, th I mean, this, this probability is going to be the same if we had our chips over here on red. You see, if we had our chips on red, it would even, it would be the same thing. Anyway, um, yeah, that's, that's how I deal with, uh, with the roulette wheel. But, um, and then of course you can add, you can add to this, right? You can add, uh, you know, what's the probability and let's actually do that. Now, of course, you notice we're adding to these variables here. There's actually another way of rewriting this, right? So we, in other words, it would be a loop, it would be a while statement, and then we'd put like a for loop or something inside. So we wouldn't have to continue to, uh, continue to do this. Because let's say we wanted to calculate the number of uh, what's the probability that 10 blacks in a row um, appears. Okay. But we'll go ahead and we'll go ahead and add another die here. So maybe that's something that you ought to work on is figuring out how we can actually shorten this such that we want to know, you know, what's the probability that 10 blacks in a row or 7 blacks in a row, whatever comes up. Because this is not the most efficient way of doing this. So, let's see, less than or equal to 18. What's the probability that, so let's say that our chips are on red and we just stay on red, you know, and three blacks have come up. Um, 
and we ask the question, you're like, man, it can't be another black because what's the probability that we get four blacks in a row? That would be terrible, right? If our chips remain on red, we keep betting on red. Okay, so let's take a look at what comes up here. Of course, this number is going to be a whole lot smarter. We're asking what's the probability that four blacks in a row um, come up? And of course, look at this. This is 5%. Let me tell you, I've been at the roulette wheel and I've literally seen 15 blacks in a row come up. And if you just keep betting on red and doubling your bet, you're going to be in big trouble because you're going to lose a lot of money, right? Like 800 bucks or something. So, you know, you look at that and you're like, man, there's just no way that another black is going to come up. So three blacks have come up in a row and you're asking what's the probability that four blacks are going to come up. And here it is right here. The probability is, is uh, close to 5%, right? Close to 5%. Like I said, I have seen it where 15 blacks in a row come up. You're just like, I'm having a bad day anyway. And, um, Seems like at Monte Carlo or somewhere it was like 30 blacks. I don't, or 30 reds. I don't know what uh, what the record on that is. Somebody look that up and tell me. Anyway, so we're over here um, doing some Python programming. I'm trying to think what's coming next. I'm thinking that we're going to, uh, since we're talking about gambling, we're going to look at uh, we're going to look at the. Uh, like a Powerball. We're going to look at a lottery. I think that's what we're going to do next. Okay, so I'll see you in the, uh, hopefully in the next video.